Welcome to the Plastic Adventures Podcast. I'm Doug, joined by Steve, and we like to talk about toys. A lot. We're here to take you on a trip down memory lane. A fireside chat, if you will, about those little pieces of plastic that captured our hearts and imaginations. So join us on this plastic adventure, and let's talk toys. Alright, welcome everybody to another episode of Plastic Adventures Podcast. A little bit different today. Yeah. We are not in Doug's toy room like we normally are, so we're getting out of our comfort zone. We're in mine. <laughs> we're in Steve's toy room. Yes. So we're just up the street, a different exotic <laughs> locale. <laughs> Coming to you live from Steve's toy room. <laughs> live on a recorded podcast <laughs> with a, reaching an audience of both of our moms. Hi, yes. Mom. <laughs> Hello, Mother. <laughs> Send some cookies and fried chicken. <laughs> See you in about 10 days for Christmas. <laughs> uh, yeah, Steve's uh, Steve's toy room. Uh, way better than mine, I have to admit. Nah, just you're different. Just, you've just got different. so many cool things. Uh, it shows a little bit different. Like, when you go into Doug's toy room, it's almost like, uh, I don't want to say Easter egg hunt, because that would infer that it's difficult to find anything in there. <laughs> but there's just so much goodness popping out of every corner. And I would... Venture to say that Doug's interests are a little bit broader than mine. He's got a way more cool, like, 80s stuff, like VHS and laser tag, and it just <laughs> Game Boy and video games, and it's super cool. Mine is like what an OCD guy does in his room, where <laughs> it's all on shelves. It's nicely, uh, somewhat nicely organized, uh, not leaving much to the imagination. But we're here. We are here, and uh, it's always a treat to come see Steve's toy room. Yeah. I uh, love it. It's always a treat to be able to come in here. <laughs> it just makes you happy walking in here. He's got a whole, sh like, two shelves full of Optimus Primes. I didn't even know they made that many Optimus Primes. Well, back in the day when I was collecting, that's that's all of them. But now too many to buy. So, yes, I, I uh, at one point was just collecting characters. Mm -hmm. So He-Man, Optimus Prime, Duke from G.I. Joe. Uh, so I have this massive, like, Optimus Prime shrine, and everyone's awesome, and I can't get rid of any of them. <laughs> But, oh, but you know that, that's how our hobby uh, is. You know, you're like, I'm just going to collect He-Man. No, you're not. Nah. You collect He-Man, and then you'll be like, oh, I really need this Skeletor. Well, uh, we, now I need all of them. Well, we, now we, I need. Oh, we've gosh. said it a million times. We're out there buying our feelings back. Yep. So when you walk in, I, I do have a certain display. When you walk by it, it just feels like being in the toy store again. It is, and it gives me a kick. I am never tired of seeing it. I, I very much enjoy it, and I'm going to figure out how to expand it. Uh, I do have my wife's Star Wars dolls in here. Hey, man, don't put down those Star and Wars And then I've dolls. got my Star Wars action figures, but uh, we'll find a way to compromise. Anyhow. What we should do one day is do a video feed. Do a video of uh, a walk around of our both of our toy rooms. And be like, show them show off, talk about them a little bit, and then kind of point out some of our favorite things yeah put a video so people do. can we put could probably faces make a couple of videos and put them up as background for youtube for yeah. a podcast that'd be yeah. kind of cool uh i will not supply my address <laughs> no <laughs> e southeastern washington that's close enough that's all you need to know <laughs> but uh anyways uh doug and i were just discussing uh there's not a ton happening in the news right now we sort of like blew the news wad over the last couple of weeks with all the Sky Striker and all the cool stuff that was coming, but there was a couple of interesting little nuggets. Mm -hmm. um, the Soundwave studio series from the Bumblebee movie is starting to, starting to hit. They found some in Southern California. So up here in Eastern Washington, we're not far behind. You know, should be just a, a week to a couple of weeks, depending on the shelf congestion as we are just unbelievably stocked at the moment in the toy sections at yeah. Walmart, at Target, they're just blown up, and it is really rad. Because I, last I think year we'll see them at the beginning of the year. That's when I'm I'm expecting them. Could be. I'm going to keep my eyes peeled because with that being the deluxe, it's not just going to ship in a case all of its own. Um, you know, there's going to be other cool stuff coming with it, and we've got those buzzworthy Bumblebee Studio Series figures coming too, which features that really awesome repaint of Cup. Yep. And the absolute. Terrific repaint of Cliff Jumper, which I know that you're waiting for. That's the one I'm really waiting for. He looks really good. Um, uh, I know that you're very specific about your in scale um, figures. I'm a little bit more open on which ones I want, and that 
uh, cliff jumper looks really good with the uh, the War for Cybertron Bumblebee. So I'm very excited to see him. I know he's a bit different. Um, his windows are painted instead of clear, which actually I don't mind at all. It makes I, more sense to make them look more like the movie since they're supposed to be studio series. Exactly, yeah. So I'm really excited for him. But, you know, uh, there's one other Transformer that I'm super excited for. And you know which one that is. Most definitely. Yeah. And they're sprouting up. Yep. They're just not, not here yet. Uh, no. I'm on the hunt constantly. And if it, there's any... Oh, Tri-Cities people out there thinking that they're going to snatch up Kingdom Blaster before I get mine and Doug. And then <laughs> we're going to have a competition. We'll have to arm wrestle for it, which you will be at a severe disadvantage. Yeah. Let's not play tic-tac-toe, because then I'll lose right away. But, uh, I'll choose you in an arm wrestling match any day. No, that, that Kingdom Blaster um, is is beautiful he's a great looking figure he is not a retool of another blaster he is not anything i mean he's all brand new all gorgeous um his transformation is great his alt mode um looks really good it's way if you compare him to the original g1 blaster they're similar in a lot of aspects but the detail on this blaster is very good. Oh, man. Yeah, it's like just walking right out of an animation cell, too. It like is. Perfect to G1. We've been so spoiled over the last couple of years with all of these great figures, and they're really... I would love to see them finish the gamut for all G1 characters somehow. And the next phase is just going to keep rolling out some classic characters mixed in with some kind of obscure choices. Yeah, the the what is it? The the Legends is going to kick off after Kingdom is done. So the yeah, reaching out to all different Transformers timelines and mm -hmm. toy lines and getting updated versions, uh, like that sweet Laser Optimus Prime that's coming. Uh, that's a have to have. But then tracks. Know, I've, I'm really looking forward to that tracks out of that first wave of that Legends line. Yeah, and we got Perceptor, a really oh, cool yeah. new Perceptor coming. Yep. I'm I'm definitely down for that new Insecticons, uh, sweet new Minosaur, but. You know, we, we've covered a lot of that. Um, they just look really, really good, though. I'm they super do. Yeah, excited it's, about it's it. It's such an awesome time to be a Transformers collector. Uh, really, we, we've been so starved of these great characters, and they've just kind of trickled out in different versions, be it IDW or... Uh, you know, they had Classics, which was kind of a cool updated version. They just weren't G1 enough. Yeah, it didn't quite, quite hit the mark. But now it's full steam ahead. Because they know all the 40-somethings buying their stuff. So, <laughs> thank you, Hasbro. Yeah, very much. Uh, speaking of Hasbro, uh, Hasbro has another update that we found this week for the uh, a retro line. I'm very heavy into the retro lines, and so um, Steve told me about the, um, what is it, the Book of Boba Fett retro line. Uh, yeah, Book of Boba Fett, but it's vintage collection. It's this, oh, vintage Yeah, the vintage, figure, vintage card, but it's the updated figures. That's right. I think you got the scoop of the day, though, on what you saw on Instagram, speaking of retro. Um, okay, so yeah. So on Instagram, uh, it was a Chinese, or, uh, uh, well, it had Asian writing. I'm not sure if it was Chinese or Japanese. But they uh, somebody did comment that, it was a, that this was a leaked photo of the 2023 Star Wars retro line that they're starting to put together, and Wicket is in that line that's that's i mean it looks it looks like the real deal to me so i'm going to assume it is very likely so it, it was very very likely that it is yep and whether that's going to be a pack-in uh, did they ever do like a battle for indoor game like a classic game see i can't or remember or um I, droid, I, droids or anything i don't I, know i think they may have um the only real Return of the Jedi game I, I remember is that battle at Sarlacc's Pit, which um, I think every every kid from our generation knows that game. Yeah, I had um, that game. That's where you go get the shovel out of the out of the tool shed and you dig a giant hole in the <laughs> ground and put little sticks in it and throw your figures in. That's uh, I right? used well, I used to use the game as the actual Sarlacc Pit uh, when I was go. playing with go. my action figures. So if Luke, you know, Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> go over it into God, the <laughs> okay. yeah. but um that would be an interesting you, uh you yeah. could make lando almost fall in and go <laughs> <laughs> it's okay i can see a lot better now um 
But no, uh, I, I think that that would. I, mean, I do. I know if that's going to be the game. No, I don't think it will be the game. Uh, it would be nice if it was that came with whatever the seventh figure is, because usually those waves come out in six figure waves, and then one is released with a board game. So, uh, if they stick with their uh, their mo, then uh, that's probably what we'll see. But I don't know if it'll be that game or not. I had a feeling. I was I was hoping it might be Biker Scout, but you know it'll be Ewok, and of course we'll. Most definitely have a Luke in there. Don't know if we'll have maybe a cool Han and Carbonite. Who knows? But. Oh, geez. Wouldn't that be cool if they if they did that one? Yeah, I wonder how many other, uh, you know, toy snobs would be screaming. Well, we, we, we'd hear a collective cry, I think, somewhere if they did that. You can't. It's going to lower the value of my vintage hand solo. Oh, yeah. I don't want anybody else to have something cool because I want mine to be more valuable. <laughs> yeah, sorry, man. I uh, want to, I'll, I'll buy that vintage. I would offer two pieces of advice. Collect for love, and if that's your attitude, uh, let's see. Oh, get bent. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. We, we don't need you. Bye. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, that would be cool. I mean, and then we've talked about the retro line before about what we want to see for the for the Jedi. Release, a lot of speculation. So. They are re- really stretching out this Mandalorian retro figures coming out with what isn't it Wave yeah. Two? Yeah, with like the Forge Master and some other. Well, and, and that's and that's all that's fine something. because I know that they're trying to do the twenty twenty three as the anniversary for Return of the Jedi. So that makes sense oh, that they'll God. want to do the yeah. retro um, line that year i mean that makes total sense so i'm not i'm not faulting them for that they're trying they would want to create hype for it makes total sense yeah it actually really does mm-hmm. I, I never even considered that but that could very well be so yeah yep. another another wave of retro mando figures coming and then we'll get our our sweet return of the jedi mm-hmm. line which i will have to buy every one of them yeah i'm but i'm not a um uh, turned off by the Mando, uh, Mando line. I actually bought. I bought them. The only one I didn't buy was the the Remnant Stormtrooper that came with the sixty dollar Mon Monopoly game that I really don't need. I mean, I think I've got like eight Monopoly boards in my board game yeah, closet it's right like now. Like a Stormtrooper with speckles on it. Yeah, it it really wasn't like something yeah. I needed to have. So the other ones, uh, they look good. They look right in line yeah. with the with the vintage style. So. Yeah, they were cool. It was awesome getting a Grand Moff Tarkin. Yeah, even Snow Speeder looks cool enough. Cool, cool enough. enough. Figure. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah. I think that, I think that's all the news of, yeah, I not, saw not on else, the web. Not much else happening. N- nothing big, anyways. Yeah. Uh, if we miss something, uh, tell us we're stupid. Write it down in the comments. Uh, not a, not that mom keeps up with toys, but you know if somebody else out there besides mom notices that there was something else. <laughs> Oh, sweetie, it's so cute that you talk about your little men on that show. Yes. <laughs> little men. Yeah. Hold on, okay. So, real quick, interject before we get on to the big stuff. I was told one time to be like, hey, describe your hobby badly. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, so what I do is I go out and I find little old men and I shove them in bags and then put them in a box in my closet. <laughs> That's a really bad way to describe my hobby, but it's also Perfect. weirdly yeah, accurate. Yeah, extremely <laughs> accurate. <laughs> oh, anyway, okay, we'll we'll move on to the 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 business portion of our podcast. Yeah, subject of the podcast. Uh, this is a great idea coming from Doug. Uh, gimmicks: what worked, what didn't, what do you like, and what you don't. Uh, Different different types of gimmicks. Yep. Uh, some of them are more of a broad type of a scheme, and then some of them are a little bit more specific. Yep. Uh, so where do you want to dig in? Well, uh, if if the eighties was anything, it was gimmicky, right? Uh-huh. Like everything had a gimmick. Toys, TV shows, movies. Um, I mean, everything had a gimmick. Shoes. I mean, what we got the Reebok pump. I mean, everything had to have some kind of a gimmick to it. That didn't make you jump higher. No, but I still got them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't either. I just wanted them. <laughs> they didn't do anything for me. But... Pro Wings and XJ900. Yeah, uh, no pump built into a $10 I'm going to go play basketball. Hold on, i got to pump up my shoe. Pump, I'm ready pump, now. Pump. That's like a vanilla ice song. <laughs> oh, but anyway, okay, so gimmicks. So, yeah, I was thinking of this, and like a lot of the lines had had gimmicks. So, so we had some that were um, maybe kind of low on the gimmick scale, and then some that were really high on the gimmick yeah. scale. So and some of them didn't work with a squat. No, some of them didn't, but they were still, you know, marketed like this is the greatest thing ever. 
Um, so, you know, we have our, uh, what I call the big four, uh, you know, you have Star Wars, Tran Transformers, G.I. Joe, and Masters of the Universe, those are my big four. And so I'm trying to think, what were some of the gimmicks in those ones? Really, um, Star Wars and G.I. Joe were really pure. They other were. Than, other than Spring Loaded, once you got later into Joe, um, yeah. I don't remember any anything some of star wars had some sound effects which were completely horrible yeah star wars had the the the, the like zzz, yeah with the little little red light bulb right yeah. like <laughs> and that was the gimmick for star wars <laughs> yeah like the button on the side of the millennium falcon that looked like some sort of like cyst or a boil that you pushed in on it <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't even know what that sound was supposed to be. Oh that it made, gosh! So. No, and I think um, you know the 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 gimmick for Star Wars wasn't necessarily in the toys themselves, but was the uh, you know they like the giveaways or the uh, the mail ins or the things like that. Man, those they those really were the pioneered ones. a lot of the tropes of figures and kind of set the set the standard. Yep. Uh, the the fact that you had these little four inch figures that could interact with big play sets and vehicles yep so really you know, that was kind of its own gimmick like on its own super, not a super gimmick heavy toy line not not gimmicks that we saw like repeated constantly no. in other lines now i was thinking about it earlier and masters of the universe is the ultimate gimmick line well once yeah. you get out of that initial offering virtually every wave is just full of gimmick type figures oh yeah uh well so so let's so masters of the universe the the gimmick that was like that held all of the figures together was the the spring loaded spring. Tor yeah. yeah the torso spring so which you know as a little kid though that's kind of cool dude so cool i yeah. mean your initial figures other than tila and evil in featured this waist twist power punch yep. action feature uh and then once you started getting into the other lines you started having battle armor you yeah. started having Fisto with the uppercut <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and Jitsu. Jitsu with the chop and Roboto with the moving gears yeah. and and Spike or with the spike that would only come out when his fist was or when his hand was down or not yeah, up and yeah you know, whatever that was <laughs> but then Web Store that crawled and yep. uh, you had squirt guns and suction cups and all kinds of things that were attached to these figures and fur and and then uh, you had Moss Man <laughs> smells like smells, smells like, like a real smells dream. like grass. <laughs> Have, have you ever been into like Michaels and they have these I bought them one time and they're supposed to smell like a Christmas tree mm -hmm. and there's this motion activated thing that you walk by and it goes smells like a real tree what it smells like a real tree they actually smelled good my wife can't stand them but that's I, I think about Mossman every time it smells like a real tree <laughs> Or what about what about Stinkor, who smells like patchouli? Smells oil. like hippies. <laughs> I mean, that's a that's, that, that's a great way. gimmick. That's yeah, a great I mean, gimmick. Uh, <laughs> what a horrible figure! I remember he, my my family talked to me about that toy when it was in the news. <laughs> they made a the news thing about Christmas it. Christmas presents because the toy just didn't smell good. Oh, awesome. uh, well, I mean, he lives up to his name. Come on. <laughs> so, I mean, Masters was was basically a gimmick toy line, start to finish. Yep. But the vehicles the, the were gimmicky. Characters were built around the gimmick, so it wasn't like um, one of my most hated gimmicks. I've got like a top three that I can't mm. stand seeing figures. Uh, that flint reactive sparking feature because it wears out so quickly. It does, and it really doesn't do anything for a figure. Uh, unless it's Barbie roller skates that, that are like, Barbie's rainbow skates catches the carpet on fire. <laughs> uh, they used them in Black Star for the Which laser lights. I, I, and I get what they were going for because I actually really like the look of the flash in, in the figure. And I thought that that was a cool gimmick for Black Star. But uh, once again, you know, that flint, is it wears down, it's gone. And then yeah, your, your guy just barely it's, sparks. It's hard to strike with the little striker. It's yeah. like a cigarette lighter. Uh, I can never get those going without torching my thumbs. It never smoked, yeah. but uh, so I, I just haven't have never liked those. And you've got Sarad with that s sparking feature with his ultra brittle plastic that he's made out of. It yeah. just didn't make a very good combination. But uh, but but the vehicles though in Masters of the Universe also very gimmicky on their own. Oh yeah, big right? walking spider and yeah, and, uh, and the, the, the what is it the spinning um, <clears throat> monstroid? I think is what that was. What called. is that? What's that one right there? Oh 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 shoot! Um, the red disc. Roton. Roton. There we go. And then you had the one with the 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 boulder. 
Yeah, Bashasaurus. Bashasaurus and Battle Bones. Oh, Battle Bones. Oh. He missed. <laughs> I mean, come on. But everything about you're right. Everything about Masters of the Universe was gimmick. Yeah, so uh, they, and we were sold on it. We were told. Yeah, to and it. I don't think that the gimmicks integrated badly into the figures. No. So it wasn't like taking a whole line of figures like crappy supernaturals and putting some dumb hologram on them. Uh, holograms like that. That's one of my top ones that I hate. I can't stand the Flint gimmick. And you know, I actually don't like glow in the dark either. Because it's it seems like a lot of work. You hold it by the light bulb just so you can cup it in your hands and look at it. You know, like look in there. Black Star Sword really does. What's glow. Doug doing in the bathroom for so it's, long? Uh, I'm playing with my glow in the dark toys, Mom. I'm playing with my little man. Leave me alone. Uh, so it, it's it's interesting in theory. And what's kind of cool is when I shut when I turn the lights out in this toy room and walk out, Scare Glow still glows. Oh yeah, yeah, you can still see that, but. It's really, it's just such a, it's like the Transformer rub signs. They were cool, but you had to just sit there. And rub and rub and rub and rub. I mean, what are, you, what are we going to just pause the battle and like, I can't tell if this guy's a Decepticon or an Autobot. <laughs> rub his sign. <laughs> Blaster, hold on. Let me rub his crotch and find out what he is. That feels good, Megatron. Why don't you rub me a little cheaper there? <laughs> How about I get a chance? You know, placement Starscream, on those stickers. Oh my yeah, god! Starscream would be way into it. Yeah, Let me rub, a little too rub, into it. I love yours if you love mine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so kind of, it was neat, but it was really like poorly executed, like oh. heat heat sensitive stickers. Yeah. Uh, I hate slime too. Oh, talk gosh, about just yeah. a ridiculous. Gimmick. It would get in the crevices of some of the figures and then dry and dude. Just... That's all. It's petroleum based, and it would get on the carpets, and that would. It would get into the the carpet fibers. It was staining mm. up carpet and pissing yeah. people off. So, the it was kind of neat thinking that there's this like really cool slime bath that you know was it Hordax thing? The slime pit. The yeah. slime pit. Yeah, yeah it was, was the it was an evil horde. Thing. Uh, I I I kind of liked that. I liked the I let's just say I I liked the idea behind it. It was kind of yeah, cool. but the slime got so filthy. Like you, yeah. you, especially if you played with your toys outside. Oh, the slime geez. would be full of crap and dirt, <laughs> and then it would spread out. It would be too runny, like over time, you know, too yeah. hot. And before you knew it, it would stain your figures, or it would. Uh, my my, my uh, I hated I just hated it getting into the cracks, and then finding it later, and you're like, what's got yeah, this crack, and, uh, this crunchy goo in your in, figure? In playing with that He-Man slime, uh, it, it's just something like you play with for ten minutes and you're done. Yeah, you don't really have much of a use for it. So, not a, not a yeah. huge fan of the slime, but not not every gimmick was a was a, a they hit. They can't all be winners. They can't man. all be winners. They can't all be winners. No. And you know you can have gimmicks done badly, mm -hmm. uh, well intentioned, like the silver hawks, uh, spreading the wings out. But if you ever wanted to attack a bad guy, you just had to spin around in circles yeah. and hopefully be like, "I'm punching there. Don't be there. You're gonna get hit." <laughs> you know, spinning karate tornado chop. I, I, I didn't. You know, I, I understand what they were trying to go for, which was really kind of cool. I mean, you know, the uh, the hidden wings under the well, hidden. They just kind of folded back behind them, and then when their wings down, yeah, yeah. They, I mean, I get what they were going for, but it just wasn't. It just didn't have staying power, right? It just didn't have staying power. I mean, um, it's one of those things. You play with it for a few minutes, and then it doesn't yeah. make a difference. Whereas the He-Man figures, with all their built-in gimmicks, like a pincher clock, yeah. a whiplashing tail, uppercut action, judo chop action, um, leech was pretty worthless. Yeah. I Stick them to a window, and that's I about it. suction cups, man. Oh, they, you can only play with them on, on a perfectly smooth surface. Yep. And you see what they did in the 90s Toy Biz figures, like uh, Nightcrawler, right? And Spider-Man. Oh. Mm -hmm. You get these giant suction cups stuck yeah. to them, and it's like completely wrecks the aesthetic of the figure. I know. So that's like gimmicks gimmicks gone wild, gimmicks done bad. Yeah, like, you know, not everything's perfect. But, you know, uh, I think they did what they were intended to do, which was to try to get us excited about it, try to get us to buy them. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you had to pick your gimmicks back in the day because... You know, like like nowadays, you just can't go and buy everything that you see on the shelves. So, you had to pick your favorite ones. Now, I think that holograms are good if they're used right. Yes. So, like visionaries, perfect. I think that was a perfect use of holograms. It fit within the characters uh, and the story's lore that they had built up around it. So, it made sense that they would have these 
holograms on their chests and, did, and on yeah. their vehicles. And it was like uh, hologram-specific activated powers. Yep. It wasn't some ridiculous thing where it was like supposed to be a hologram of a man and then turned into a spooky ghost half the time. Right, exactly. And then uh, you mentioned rub stickers, which on Transformers, I think... Uh, I, I could either have them or not have them. It really didn't matter. But uh, I think where Rub stickers came out really good were on Battle Beasts, which was kind of the precursors to the Pokemon fighting for yeah, in the 90s. Yeah, because Battle Beast was a rock, paper, scissors game. It, it was. Yeah. And, and so it, it made sense like that you'd ha- it would be you'd have to hide it and find out what it was in order to win the, the fight. Yeah, so. and uh, it, it almost, if I recall properly, if I'm not Mandela-ing here... <laughs> They did show a little bit quicker than Transformers. It was like the the tint on them Maybe. or something when you heated them up. It didn't. It was a little bit quicker to get to your wood fire or water. Um, but I, I, I remember that being more uh, more playable than the just regular just oh is he an Autobot or Decepticon? So uh, like I said, so, so some of the ones where you're like oh these weren't good. Well, they had their they had their place if they were done right. Hold on. Is this character evil? His name is his name is Megatron. He turns into a gun. <laughs> He's this guy's name is Menasaur. Is he evil? Is he evil, yeah. <laughs> Devastator? Yeah. I don't know where we're I am so confused. None of those are helpful. Yeah. Not at all. Uh Right. But um okay, so um G.I. Joe was an- another one that you know the the gimmick <clears throat> in the figure, or at least the uh the three and a quarter, three quarter uh, figures were uh, the O ring, uh, the posability, the um, you know the um, the joints and everything. They were supposed it, to kind of mimic the twelve inch. Yeah, is what I mean, they were was, going was for. Was that more like a, a feature or well, it was a, fe- like well, a gimmick? I, I think the first run would be it, this is the gimmick of this figure. Where Highly after that like, it just you know, became the standard Star Wars sort of. scale, and they can actually like bend at the elbows, yeah. et, et, et cetera. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. And then um, you know uh, the vehicles themselves. Um, I think GI Joe when it started out was mostly a, a vehicle line instead of a figure line because there were so many fi- uh, vehicles and stuff that went along with it, and they would highlight the vehicles more on the commercials than they would the actual you know figures. So it felt like a vehicle line versus a um uh action yeah, figure action line figure baseline yeah but that's yeah. not how i well, saw it but, but you know you take a look at the colors of the the initial offering from gi joe and they're it's fairly generic you mm-hmm. know nothing wild or anything so may, maybe you're right maybe that whole uh trying to market the figures as a avenue to sell the vehicles and mm-hmm. it's really smart and it wasn't mm-hmm. until later lines then you started really branching out and getting ninjas and well yeah uh, so, so some you know guy who forgot his army clothes and wore his freaking football jersey to work that day well yeah. a- after about 89 uh when we got past the the large vehicle phase of gi joe you know the the defiant the flag and you know tanks and stuff like that we started getting into the the 90s neon yeah, looking the, um, the spring loaded weapons that each of them had uh, color changing paint on some of them for the eco warriors oh, and hate color and changing the uh, GI Joe between 90 and 94 became too gimmicky I think and kind of lost what it was I I think that something made special. happened and they started allowing spring loaded firing mechanisms again in toys after that whole mm, Battlestar, Galactic, Battlestar Galactica Viper choking thing they had to be a certain size I want to say it was at least two inches mm. and Hasbro just went like all out oh we can do this now and like <laughs> every figure came with a backpack or something to ride on that, that fired a big you yep. know, colored missile out of it yeah, uh, I mean, I, I I was never really <clears throat> too impressed with those kind of gimmicks from GI Joe. I didn't like the guns were too big, unwieldy on the characters. Um, they just didn't feel right. Didn't I mean I was I was actually more impressed with the Sonic fighters than I was with the a- actual rocket firing fighters. Oh yeah, sound. even even though the backpack was large. Um, <laughs> but I was still kind of that made more sense to me than the the giant guns. Um, yeah. So. You, so yeah, how do you feel about that uh, sound and voice in toys? I think initially when we were growing up, uh, it had to go through its growing pains. Uh, but now, I mean, you you have some toys that have 
100, 150 phrases, uh, which is remarkable and and very well hidden too. I mean, they don't seem bulky or anything like no, that these you days. Fit all that on a teeny tiny little microchip, yeah. stuck to a watch um, battery. Yeah. But but when we were growing up, right? You had <laughs> here connect this giant block to the back of your action figure, and he can speak three words, three phrases. <laughs> now, what got me? Uh, you saw a little bit of it with Transformers Generation Two. When they started mm. doing the the missile firing gimmicks and yep. stuff in there, but it's like they just had the interns do the voices. So <laughs> the Optimus sounded yeah. real weird. I'm Optimus Prime. <laughs> you know, like that's yeah. all it did. And then one of them was just this weird truck sound for 40 straight seconds. <laughs> I actually have the voice box. I do you I really? Don't know if it, I don't know if it works. I'll see if it might. <laughs> I have to break it out and see if that works. But I. I it does, and it sucks. I'll oh, put it up close to the microphone so people who uh, okay. who want to hear it can be just as uh, traumatized as us. Okay, this is in Steve's toy room. This is this backpack is roughly three inches by three inches and an inch and a quarter deep. Okay, yeah. So it's it's unwieldy. Yeah. So there's like fourteen D batteries in there that power this thing. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. You want the next? Yeah, do it. Oh, I don't even know what that is. And hey, you know what? We just ate up forty seconds of audio on yeah, our show. We did with the truck sound on there. <laughs> Horrible. Oh man! But that's what we had to deal with back then, and that's what I mean by those the, the gimmicks. Some of them were okay, some of them were not. But um, you know, uh, they were doing what they needed to do to try to sell toys during that. Which, which actually, I can start to see was as the declining interest in toys could be, be about the nineties. So they had to try to. Build more hype, build more things to try to get kids to buy these toys. Uh, how do you feel about Wind Up? Because that kind of made its way into some Masters and uh, GI Joe with what, a little Wind Up motorized, uh, like for vehicles and things. Well, they they introduced that into the line. Do you think that that helped with the Wind Up mechanism with the machine guns? That oh, were oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, like and in Zoids from Tony. Uh, oh, they dude. Okay, cool so Wind, wind up, up Zoids. Yeah, that was legit. Okay, so. Um, like I, I said on previous podcasts, I was really into modular toys. I liked toys that you could take and kind of customize that was that were meant to be built in different ways instead of just what was on the, the front of the box. And um, a lot of those modular toys were motorized. So some of them did have wind-up functions. A lot of them had battery functions where they would, you know, they have little small... Yeah, Legions of Power was Le all battery, right? Yeah, Legions of Power was battery. Um, I think Constructs <laughs> went into the battery um, movement of those. Uh, and I, robotics. Robotics. Speaking of 15D batteries <laughs> or whatever it takes, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, another one, I think it's one of those personal things. Like, you may not have been too excited about those... But I actually thought that the motorized things were, were really cool. I like the idea of that. Yeah, I didn't mind that because it, it made sense in context. It wasn't like trying to shoehorn a toy around the motorized feature. You wind it up and the machine guns rotated around. Or in the case of the Zoids, you know, you had like this like armature that looked bladed thing that would rotate in and out or right. blasters that would rotate in and out. So... To me, that wasn't a complete waste, yeah. and the way that the technology was integrated into the toys, it didn't disrupt the play of the toy. Right? Didn't Star Years have a wind up too, where uh, yeah, like, that's, like that's, they would have like the drills and yeah, the that's, things? Yeah, that's that what were... I meant when I said Zoids. Uh, oh, Star okay. Years, yeah. Star Years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, that, that's what. Yeah, they integrated very well into it. And actually, you know what, Zoids too, uh, and even the new Zoids, when that started come when they imported uh, that series over to Cartoon Network back in like. 97 or 98, whatever it was. Uh, a lot of those had little battery compartments built in. They're really cool. I love yeah. those models. And some of them were wind up. Uh, but you didn't have anything like strange, bulky, or inhibitive to the toy like you would have, uh, say, Silverhawks. Just for the sake of spreading the wings, you lose a full range of arm yeah. articulation. Which I don't think was a good idea. I think they should have just made the wings just attached to the arms and have them be able to move however they want and yeah. the kids can make their arms go out if yeah. they wanted to fly put, them. put the arms on a on a ball joint that little those levers that swing out to make the arms spread open why not just make that a ball joint what, that, yeah. that the arms are on but yeah you know hey uh, i'm not a toy designer yeah, i know and back then <clears throat> i wouldn't have even known what the hell to do anyhow other than break my toy yeah which i probably did um 
But G.I. Joe had a few motorized things, which I thought were kind of cool. The Mobat was really cool. I mean, yeah, a, a tank yeah. that could move. Yep. That was cool. And it actually had tracks and things like mm-hmm. that. Uh, what was the other one? The Mauler? I think the Mauler was also... Don't uh, remember. I never, never I had I think one. the Mauler was a battery-operated one, too. Um, so, yeah. Uh, motorized things. I'm 100% on board with the motorized things. Uh, how do you feel about laser gimmicks? Meaning like little blinky light bulbs? Well, or? <laughs> I, mean, I mean like Brave Star and uh, oh, you mean Power. Oh, so you mean like uh, infrared. the infrared, yeah. yeah. So that was another thing that was like one of those emerging technologies uh, for yeah, toys, toys back were, then. toys were more expensive, or at least Brave Star was when it, yeah. when it came out. Um, and toys that could shoot each other? I was kind of all right with that. I mean, um, Brave Star was the one that I think that did it the best. Um, though Captain Power kind of went to the next level with the integrated with yeah, you can I'm, shoot the VCR I'm on the opposite and, side there uh, but I really liked that you could do uh, you know he had the, the spring loaded gun action and boom 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 and he had the backpack that would shoot the infrared towards was it Tex Hex yeah. and uh, they would get into gun battles which was the but their the point yeah, their, so, their laser thing was this gigantic backpack yes it was put them in. there was kind of a cool laser tag esque gun set where it was the I, oh they got a name for them there's some Neutral laser instead of neutralizer. Neutral laser. Neutral laser. And you had a Tex Hex and a Brave Star, and I think you could play laser tag with those two guns. Oh. So they kind of broke it out into there. I don't remember any Brave Star vehicles or play sets having laser interactivity. Like like uh, Captain but Coward Captain did. Captain Power yeah. took that next step where it would interact with the television and the toys. You had more vehicles that yep. could interact with each other. The action figures did not. No. Thank goodness, because they would have, you know, you would have had like this gigantic uh, size of a Rolex body with just arms and legs sticking off of it, yep. and you know, it'd be four inches deep to have the the technology built into it. Well, let, let's talk about Captain Power altogether, because Captain Power was another one of the gimmick lines. The whole thing was a gimmick. Yeah. Um, so you had the infrared, um, and then you had some of them that were... Okay, well, let's talk about the infrared first. So... There was the um, the VCR tapes that you you could play with your um, the jets that would fly around, and they marketed it very well. So that way, when you got home with it and you wanted to play, you're like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be shooting my TV and things are gonna happen." That was so janky. It was hard to do. It was extremely hard to do. the 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 the, the jets would fly on the screen. Their little red box would blink really, really quick, and you'd have to try to shoot it, and it wouldn't work. <laughs> so the difficulty was turned up way too high for the average kid. It was just, it just, it was, it was disheartening how hard it was to actually interact with the TV. Um, the blinking was supposed to be able to be registered in the lens and tell if if the TV had shot you or not, uh, but it, that also didn't seem to work very well. And it, I don't know if it was because I was a kid and not doing it the correct way or if it was just the technology Maybe was not it was good just enough technology at the time but the vehicles and toys could interact with each other but, yeah and that that's actually was better the saving grace yeah, yeah. the the two the, so you had the 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 black jet which was really cool looking and you mm-hmm. had the white jet and those things could fire at each other like laser tag and that worked really well um so that aspect of it was really cool and the figure so captain power um they, they all kind of had their own gimmick uh, for figures, so like there was the tank guy, and then there was the ace flying guy, and they all had their own kind of thing. <clears throat> and Captain Powers was he had a hole in his chest with a clear uh, logo, like a clear mm-hmm. symbol, yep. and you'd plug him into this power, power on station. thing, yeah. and the light would shine through his chest. And I'm like, yeah, that man. was really cool. Now that part was really, That's I dug works. that. It's I really, really dug that. Uh, but it, I, I have one. I have the base in the closet. Yeah. Uh, thanks to Rogue Toys in Portland, that was one of the few things I've picked up from that place on the way through. So I, so, I have that base. It just doesn't display well on my shelves. So, Ca- so Captain Power was one of those. It felt like it was a, a miss for what they were trying to do with the interactiveness on the television, but it was a definite hit for the interaction between two yeah, toys. And it was supported with a surprisingly well and grown up show, like well done that, show for a, a kid's show. Yeah, that was actually. Uh, I think it was pretty ground- groundbreaking for its time. Yeah. Um, the show was kind of dark, um, and it dealt with some very dark themes. 
and uh, it was live action, which was also another... Yeah, because now um, you're seeing people dealing with consequences. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I, I actually have the entire series uh, on DVD, and uh, it's, it's definitely one of those that... Um, it's one of those 80s memories that you have to talk about when you're talking about gimmicks, because it was... It, the whole thing was a gimmick. I remember watching the last episode of the first season, and my brother, my older brother and my sister were just giving me fits of trouble. Like, I was trying to watch it, they were turning the TV off, they were being loud, and back then, I, you know, I re couldn't really run the VCR to try and record it, they would have screwed it up anyways, but seeing that gal die at the end of that episode... Where she was digitized? Uh, is that what happened Yeah, when her? they would digitize them. That's so, another scary term. Well, I know, she blew herself up with the robot. Oh! They were in the base, and the bad guys got into the base, and I think it was the guy that had the tank treads for the feet. Oh. Uh, I, I like the toys. I don't. I only have one. Uh, anyways, he was in the base, and she was, I, if I recall, there was like bleeding at the mouth, and and well, uh, have to go back and watch that. Some one. like professed her love for Captain Power, and then blew the whole thing. Oh, I know who you're talking and about. I remember seeing that and thinking, this is a kids' show. Yeah. At the time when I was little, this is a kids' show. I can't believe they did that. Yep. And they had just softened us up a little bit with Transformers the movie and G.I. Joe. Uh, think, you know, where we almost saw violence with very little consequence day to day in the cartoons. Um, you actually had characters like permanently dying uh, or going into a coma or whatever it's going to be, you know, but like blood in yeah. G.I. Joe the movie, that was interesting. But And then, you know, anime happened. Yeah. And just blows your mind. You've watched Vampire D when you're <laughs> oh, geez. used to Transformers. And, so uh, much blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, Captain Power had another thing, though, that it had going for it. Uh, it had CGI in that yeah. live action. Yeah. So uh, I remember that was pretty cool. Uh, Mind-blowing at the time. Now when you look back at it, it was pretty The show was very that. expensive to produce, too. I guess that was one of the factors why they why they shut it down. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you got the laser gimmick there. Do you have any gimmicks that you just hate? Like you, the toy line just disturbed you or... Um, you know, it impeded the the, the figures, or, or maybe yeah. figure specific. Yes. Okay. So I have one, and it's it's they didn't do it as much in the '80s, but man, in the late '90s and the early 2000s, and going into now, they do it all the time, and it really bugs me. It's the big head, little body figure. Um, so let's think Funko. Or uh, I, think I hate, I hate pops or whatever uh, they are. Some of them are cute, but uh, uh, it, it doesn't appeal. I to me. cannot stand the big head, little body aspect of things that they're trying to get. I it, it just it's ugly. It's ugly to me, so those, and I do not like them. Those uh, uh, what the hell were they called? That girl's line of toys. Oh, I'm sorry. That line of dolls was it Monster High or something where they had the big big heads and the weird no brats brats uh, yeah. no my sister is really into Monster High she's she's into this apparently there's this whole subculture of Monster High where you can where you are customizing and making your own monsters now she's heavy into that and she's older than me well, God bless her whatever <laughs> you know that's fine. Uh, but I, I know what you mean like the chibi head kind yeah. of thing it, it it's never really appealed to me. I, uh, it, it I, just, I just, I'm like, I, you know, when I when I see a toy, I want to be able to play with it. I want to be able to hold it. I want to be able to pose it. I want to be able to do something with it. When you're looking at this toy with this gigantic melon on this little body, it's like, uh, there's no fun in that. What, what are they? What is it called? Hydrocephalitis or something? When your head is actually large. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh my gosh, I don't know, but it's just the, the the playability of when I see something like that just goes way down. So yeah, like the Dick Tracy figures, junk. Junk. Uh, you know, they had a Ninja Turtle style body for articulation, and their heads were like overly large for the for the toys. Oh man, talk about gimmicks! Ne Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, man, that was full of them. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, following in the footsteps of Masters, they had to figure out how to keep making it interesting for the turtles. Yeah. You aren't just going to keep buying base S turtles. Some 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 of the gimmicks were okay, but most of them just were like. What? What were you thinking? But then again, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is one of those weird lines where you pretty much anything goes <laughs> with it. Yeah, they with it. have some goofy stuff, you know. Yeah. So 
the the wacky action, you know, like you wind as a wind up feature. Yeah. And I don't and remember the maybe break was, dancing yeah, Mikey would spin on his whole forearm would just like completely <laughs> rotate 360 <laughs> degrees or some nonsense like that. Oh. Or or the turtles that would uh you'd you'd open their chest and fold their arms and their legs in and they could become shells. Oh, transformer turtle things. Yeah, well, yeah. They, they didn't really transform. It was, it was supposed to be like they were pulling their arms and legs and their head ah. into their shell. And so I was like, well, okay. But when they turned into a figure, I was like, oh, man, that's They're ugly. ugly. <laughs> uh, you know what one I did like, though? Huh. Storage shell. What's that? They're the ones where the shells just opened up. And they had these little pegs where you could put in stars and fist daggers and stuff in no, the back. No, I don't remember that. Oh. They had, I, I want to say that the figures featured a colored waistband or something. There was something a little bit different about the deco, but they were the, the size of a regular Ninja Turtle and mm-hmm. the shell was hinged and you'd pop it open mm. and all those really cool things that came on that weapons rack sprue thing you could, could go into the, in the back. Oh. Well, that's actually kind of cool. I wish I'd that's, seen that. That's neat. But that's that's a gimmick that doesn't impede the figure. Mm-hmm. So it's not like he's trying to hold his nunchucks and his arm rotates 300 degrees <laughs> because the th- mechanism's broke. Oh, gosh. Uh, how do you feel about stuff like the superpowers? Squeeze the legs and make the arms move. Mm-mm. No. You like it? Um, no. I, I, I always felt that always made the chest look larger. Than the figure should have been. Maybe because so the you, housing, the mechanism. Yeah. yeah, the the mechanism that made the arms go back and forth had to be rather large for the gears to interact with each other. So their chest always kind of seemed to be really big, and their arms would be at a weird angle to make it look like they were doing something. So that didn't really sit well with me. I mean, I understand what they were trying to do, but you know, I want to say a lot of figures right. broke their legs at the hips at that connection because of you know when you're squeezing those toys oh, yeah, yeah. really going at it yeah maybe not the the hinged hip which activated the action but the other one that was just on a regular post i think that i recall my superpowers batman suffering the fate when he was battling uh, superman mm-hmm. uh, on a sidebar to that <laughs> did sidebar. you ever have a cousin or a friend that they brought you a toy, like some something, I mean, such a great gesture, right? Like, or we're going to go to Billy's house, you can get a toy, but you need to pick one out for him too, or something like that. Okay. You know, like a family member or whatever it was going to be. So you get to kick ass uh, G.I. Joe and give him the weird gimmicky toy? <laughs> no, you buy G.I. Joe's and you buy yourself, like, Storm Shadow, mm-hmm. and you get Voltar for the other kid. Just to, <laughs> Only just if I didn't to, like my just cousin. Just to be a dick so that your toy could be better. <laughs> No, I didn't okay. do that. Man, I feel like that transfers over into adulthood, though. Okay. I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that's, yeah, I buy the cool transformer. Then you get my old one. Then I get your old no one. Which I don't guess. mind, actually. Yeah. I kind of like that deal. But, but uh, yeah, so I got that <clears throat> Superpowers Batman. I loved the Superman movies when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I still love Superman 1 and 2. Yep. Uh, Even though there's, uh, you're looking back at him now and go, <laughs> i got to forgive a lot. i got to yeah, forgive a lot to enjoy this. Yeah. <laughs> Superman. Yeah, the... The, 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 the plastic the, the chest. The, 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 the big plastic yeah. ass he rips off of his... I used to play this in, in school. When? No, you did not play this in school, Superman. You just lied. <laughs> you didn't... You did well, not do this. You didn't go to school on Krypton. <laughs> do you, is there no continuity? Yeah, that's because the the oh. Schumacher cut that they used like fifty one percent of, and then had the new director put all the weird crap into that oh, movie. Oh gosh. Anyhow, like I said, I have to loved forgive a lot. Loved Superman, and uh, I think my grandma took my cousin to Giant T at the time, mm-hmm. and uh, but we were like best friends as a kid. I uh, love him to death, but I'm very certain that he got Superman for himself <laughs> and then gave me Batman knowing I was getting the lesser of the two. <laughs> Anyways, uh, oh. so so you don't you don't like the squeeze gimmick? I, no, well and and I don't I I don't like certain punching gimmicks because of the same aspect for it makes the figure disfigured in in certain ways. Like the one with the button where there's the button on the back and their arm raises up. And I think that that kind of just like... Commonly referred to as battlematic action. Yeah. yeah, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons and also um, Thundercats. Yeah. uh, Some of those didn't feel right. And some of them kind of hit, tried to hide it well. So I I give them a pass. Uh, Like uh, for Dungeons and Dragons. Well, the the arm would just sit there and swing. Yeah. So, I mean, and you know, you're going to play with this as a kid. So you got to be able to put some level of, of... 
rugged Stress. play on yeah. it. Yeah. So um, anyway, yeah, some of those things I'm just not a fan of, but and mostly not because of the action itself, but because of the way that it made the figure look. Yeah. Yeah, and then on, somewhat disruptive. And then on that note, are the ones where it's like where the figure has like the the gimmick built into them of the rocket firing thing. So their uh, arm is like, can, okay, yeah, this is cool. His his left arm can move and is articulated, but you know his right arm constantly has to stay out at this yeah, ninety degree angle. There's a hole that runs through the fist, <laughs> and the spring goes up into the shoulder. Exactly. And the torso. Yeah, that's crap. Yeah. Uh, Chuck Norris Karate Commandos. Unfortunately, that was that was filled full of these gimmicks that, yep. you know, they'd break or whatever. The best Chuck Norris, the one that's white and blue, the coolest one, mm-hmm. uh, he's got a gimped leg. Like, the, the, the spring wears out really easy. Really so fast. trying to stand the figure up, even Fluke. when you were a kid. He's <laughs> like, well, you know, I had some knee surgery, <laughs> had hip surgery, and now one leg's an inch shorter oh, than the other. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I think maybe so what we're trying to we're getting at which without even realizing is that some of the spring loaded things maybe were not designed well but the idea was kind of sound they, they wanted to put it out there for the kids to be able to shoot these missiles but was it was it really any different like any more satisfying when you were a kid than taking the missile off the side of the Havoc or the Skyhawk or, or uh, the Dragonfly mm-hmm. And flying the missile dramatically no, through. It, no, then, I would have rather done that, actually. And then the Cobra guy's ejection seat doesn't work when I play. <laughs> Hit the ejection he seat! Just, he just respawns. We didn't install the injection seat. <laughs> or the ah, injection seat. You asked for budget cuts, <clears throat> We had to go somewhere. No, um, those those are... I, I, I would actually rather have the... Put the missiles on the rack than have the missile shoot with a spring loaded. Be- better aesthetic and yeah. really just... Uh, there's nothing to really gain out of the spring-loaded thing. The GI Joe base, I think it was from '92, that kind of one that folded fold out up thing. Yeah, uh, that had one kind of an interesting plate built into it, where if something touched the plate hard enough, the tower collapsed. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, that was kind of interesting, but it would not collapse under the impact of a spring-loaded missile hitting no, it. No, you, you'd have to. So. Yeah, and well, that one also talked. That one had Sonic. Uh, it had lights. Uh, they tried to put all kinds of gimmicks in that one. Um, the, the the cannons would shoot. They had like little red cannons that would shoot these things. Yeah, there um, was actually like a Gatling gun, if, if I recall. Yeah, like, like a that green that would shoot spin, little green missiles. And as it rotated, it would twink, 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 yeah. twink, shoot the And those things were missile. actually shot out with a pretty yeah. good force on that one. I remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yep. man. Thanks, toy deregulation. <laughs> but you know what? If a kid chokes on a three-inch green missile, don't you think society's better off without him? <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Oh my gosh, you're a little you're unforgiving, man. This no, um, natural selection. Come on, you Darwinism really, is at its best. Really, Jimmy? I mean, what are you going to put a warning label on dirt now because some little dipshit eats a wad of dirt and chokes? Come on. Uh, oh. Uh, spring. So let's go back to spring. So there was one particular. Uh, so remember Power Lords. I have yes. a. I kind of have a love hate relationship with Power Lords. I like the idea of it and the yeah, yeah. the look of it is kind of cool, but his uh, switching mechanism with the spring and his w- waist would spin around uh, wore out. It never really worked. That it, it, yeah. it well. It, it would like stick halfway. Yeah. And then you'd have to, like, spin him again. And it was just, oh, man. I, I'll get you once I shink chiropractor. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Uh, can you spin me all the way around? There we go. Uh, okay. All right. Your toes. Your toes. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, it, it, I think this, well, the spring-loaded thing was never meant to, well, these toys were never meant to go as long no. as we've no. as we've made them last. And uh, so, of course, a lot of those spring-loaded things are going to be dead now, or very, yeah, very were, well. Were they used. even intentionally designed, knowing that within like ten minutes the kid's bored of it and done? Yeah, I don't know. But, I mean, but, also, but does it hamper the toy though? I mean, you know, does, does it make the toy less fun to play with because a torsion spring broke or yeah. it doesn't work anymore? Uh, oh man. Okay, so we love masters, right? Yeah. There's only a few gimmicks gone wrong in those toys, and Ram Man. 
<laughs> has to be the like the absolute worst. <laughs> Not only is he tragically named, but uh, the, the the whole aspect of Ram you, Man you is like even give him rotating shoulders. <laughs> nope, nope. He can only bicep this, and that was it. And his weird spring legs, and uh, he was just I don't know what they were thinking with Ram Man, and no. and then in the cartoon. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Hey, man. Uh, I'm going to go run into this wall here if nobody needs me right now. <laughs> hey, kids. Don't do that. Because I don't know any better. I'm mentally retarded. Don't you, use me as a role model. <laughs> say, say that back then. You know, they couldn't even, you couldn't even say the word retard now in a cartoon. Mm-hmm. You'd be in a lot of trouble. Nope. But back then, you know, you have a, don't hit your head on things like me today, because then you'll be knocked. <laughs> He-Man's PSA at the end of every Ram Man. Now, remember kids, kids, remember, do not be like Ram Man. <laughs> Ramming kids. your head into things does not fix the situation. Do you really want to knock yourself stupid? <laughs> of course. Yeah. Dude, I watched Ram yeah. Man. I would put pillows on my grandma's couch. I'd run and head dive into the pillows. <laughs> Which probably explains a lot. <laughs> so not, oh. not 90s related. You're, you're the idiot that ruined it for everybody. Don't do this at home, no, kids. I'm told. My, my family would be too embarrassed of having such a stupid kid that also probably choked on a three-inch green missile. So, uh, it, gim, Talking about gimmicks, mm-hmm. uh, I, I usually don't discuss Hasbro figures, the Hasbro wrestlers from the 90s, because they're a little out of out of range, but... That is probably the most gimmick heavy line aside from Masters. They've probably. Got the waist twist torsion things. They've got. Uh, you ever want to see a weird punch? They've got this spring in one stiff arm and you pull the arm back. That's, like, what, I, that's like what I'm talking gun, about. And it shoots forward. You see what I mean, though? It, it, it ruins the, uh, the aesthetic of the figure, but, unless that's the, the intended aesthetic. But that was built in well enough that you can kind of play with a figure and not notice it so much, especially if you don't use the feature, which is, this wrestler can punch another wrestler. What? They just do that anyway. That's what they're supposed okay. to do. Uh, but the guys that jumped. Oh. They had the Ram Man legs that would squish into the upper torso. Like uh, the a, rockers. And they had a tab on their back that stuck <laughs> off like a half an inch. So you'd have to push this tab down. Now there, shame on you, Hasbro. It's the worst ever for those figures. No, I will have to say, though, for the wrestling figures, the coolest thing that I remember about them, I don't collect them, but I remember the wrestling ring with the spring sides the the rubber bands on the sides yeah was, that was a cool so idea well that, that was a that freaking cool idea ring. aside from the brittle brittle ring posts when i played with it i took these plastic chopsticks we had and i went under the ring and i pushed them up into the posts oh so to give reinforce them yeah. smart thinking uh but yeah those were great they had turnbuckles that when you hit the turnbuckle they would go up and down so that was the line was fairly well engineered for cartoony wrestlers but that that wrestling enough, enough was about that cool. um uh, since we don't really talk about all that is is sort of a master's rehash, uh, but I can see the I can see the look. Yeah, for it. I can see it. Even though I don't collect it, I can understand it. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, you can you can take most of those toys and wrestle the other wrestlers with them. I'll play with uh, it. <laughs> well, not now. Let's go, Steve. That, yeah, I, don't want to I call Ultimate David. Warrior. God, God dang. <laughs> Hasbro's are an arm and a leg now. Man, oh man, I still haven't bought the Yoko Zuna because the things. You know, goes for like sixty to eighty bucks. Oh and I man! Just don't want to spend that on that. Uh, I, I kind of got in and almost got out in time with with Hasbro's. Uh, Masters got in and got out on time. Yeah, I think we uh, we mask. Hit, we hit the collection part of it just Ooh, at the right time. Mask. That's the one that's killing me. I wish I would have collected the parts and pieces when I first got the toys. Uh, I wish I hadn't got rid of mine every, when I every did. Every single piece that you need to complete a vehicle is 40 bucks. Yeah. Uh, a mount for Rhino, you know, everything. Um, but there is a guy I follow on Instagram who specializes in recreating mask parts because of that reason. Because they're just so freaking expensive and so hard to find. So he recreates them very well. And yeah. sells them at for a fraction of the price. I, I would consider it only if I wasn't so close with the vintage. No, I get it. I get but, it. Yeah, I mean, it's um, great when... If you're going to spend, you know, 60 bucks on a Thunderhawk, not even complete, a lot of people get into this... T- or, or, you know what, Masters of the Universe, for that matter, I think we gave some advice uh, with 
for, for first time for collectors, first, for collecting tips. And that was buy the thing complete. Yeah. If it's a difference between twenty bucks, buy the thing complete. You'll never be able to to you know pay forty or forty five for this thing and then find the accessory that's that's going to be fifteen or twenty. You're, you're just it, it's an. You're better off saving your money yeah. and holding on to it and finding a complete something rather than trying yeah. to piece it together. Uh, unless it's just an absolutely outstanding sort of an opportunity and you know you'll complete it for way less than what the complete ones go but yeah uh, don't 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 fall for the uh the people who on ebay put on you know these large lots of figures and they're all broken they're missing arms missing legs and missing things like that you know you know the lot of action figures for parts or for rebuilding and seven hundred dollars like, yeah no don't for do classic it. joe yeah D don't yeah. do it don't don't do it <laughs> you are better off just saving your money and buying a full, um, a whole figure uh how do you feel about light up light up like uh, like uh, you push a button and there's an led light inside of the toy that lights up um Again, if it doesn't impede the function of the action figure or the look uh, of the action figure, it it has its it has its place. I think it's pretty cool. You know, for a while there, the ele like you were saying earlier, the electronics are so big to mm -hmm. get a light up figure of any kind. You had a single sculpt from the lower torso where the legs plugged into the top of the head, yep. and you had arms that plugged in, no neck movement, no nothing, and sometimes you'd have a big weird button sticking somewhere out Yeah, of it. it just really just made the figure just look really weird. And, uh, you know, for, for the technology, I can get it, but it, for a kid wanting to play with something really cool, just kind of just, just took away from the whole thing. Um, now, today's technology, we have LEDs that are super small, uh, power uh, doesn't need as much power yeah, as we used to need it. Cell battery, like yeah. a single one. Yeah. And you could have a full light up gimmick. You could have two, or, you know, you can have three or four LEDs on a on a toy that would light up on that. So that's actually, um, I, I think they're 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 in that aspect. Some of the modern toys are a little bit better than the ones that we had. Oh, in engineering, far and away, uh, yeah. being able to fit the gimmicks in. But you know, every once in a while, you still walk down that to toy aisle and you're like, what? Yeah. Yeah, I mean they still do it, but um, yeah, I, I the light up ones are interesting. They're kind of along the lines of the uh, if we're talking just like vintage toys, uh, they're along the lines of the Sonic ones. Like as long as it didn't it didn't impede, but some of them, man, they were just really really weird. Yeah, and just did not fit. Yeah, I mean it's almost like you would have been better served instead of putting some of these gimmicks on these figures, giving them extra accessories or extra yeah, maps or something. Absolutely, because ultimately the best gimmick of all is the imagination. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you push a button and Cyclops' eyes light up when he shoots his. You're going to see that way anyway in your mind. When you're eye. a child playing with the toy, you're already making the sound and pushing your hand forward like you're projecting force from the figure. Yep. Uh, so really, the, you know, the ultimate gimmick is the imagination. It is. Um, and, you know, I've got loads of imagination. Uh, one of the ones that you said that you didn't like, which I actually kind of do like, is the glow-in-the-dark. Now, um, it, but again, it has its place. Um, so I really did like the aspect of the Black Star glow-in-the-dark accessories. I thought that was cool. The figure themselves didn't glow-in-the-dark, but the accessories did, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, uh, Legions of Power had glow-in-the-dark parts that you would be able to put on t to the modular blocks. Uh, Lego had great glow-in-the-dark. I don't know what Lego did back in the day with their glow-in-the-dark, but theirs would seem to stay glowing hmm. a lot longer than everybody else's. And I don't know what they put in there. It's uh, I don't know if it's like a you know twelve herbs and spices secret that they're just not going to let could people be know. A blend of plastic, but it worked. It really worked. And so you would shine a light on that thing, and you know my brother he said he said well don't hold it up to the light and turn on use a flashlight and get it right on there. So I didn't have to you know I was just hold the flashlight onto it and then turn off the lights. So, but uh, I, I think glow in the dark was actually a pretty cool pretty cool gimmick i'm still kind of in i i still kind of like it i'm not gonna lie oh, that's that's okay <laughs> i just felt like you know most of the time when you're <clears throat> when you're playing with the toy even during the day if you shut the lights off in your room you still had some light coming around mm -hmm. curtains or blinds so it almost lost a little bit of it for me yeah uh 
Yeah, so that. But I, I can't would, tell you how many times I had glow in the dark toys under the covers. I wish that Zartan worked better. Oh. Because his color change gimmick was cool, but those, those like heat and light dependent color change things, the uh, even Hot Wheels, it just takes so darn long for the the color change to happen on them. Yeah. It's, now, when Hot Wheels introduced the uh, the water changers, where the paint would change color when you would run it underwater, that was cool because then you could see it change quickly. So I liked those ones, but then it took a little while for the color to come back, yeah. and then you'd run it under the water again yeah, and it would disappear. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so some of those worked, some of them didn't. I did like uh, the gimmick for Zartan, though, with his color changing... Um, skin. Yeah, and I think didn't didn't some of the vehicles feature that? And there were a few other characters. I, I don't like know, Savannah but his brother and sister and did. Xandar, they, they had the same thing. It just, to me, it just kind of took too long to activate. Yeah. It had to be in direct sunlight for a while, and then you know. But man, when he turned, he, some... He's very blue. Some yeah. of them very blue. Very, yeah. very blue. Uh, very cool. I don't know... Like, uh... uh <coughs> excuse uh, me. What's her... Um, what's the name of the little gal from Willy Wonka that got turned into the Mary. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh man. Veruca Salt or something. I don't remember what her, what her name was. but The uh, the new Zartan, the one that came out for the San Diego Comic Con, and then I think there's another release. Yeah, yeah they're doing another one. Another release. Uh, how one, does his color change work? Is it the same way? Don't know. haven't seen any videos on it. But, I mean, that's a nice little throwback. A throwback, yeah. The, that's kind of cool. Toys. Um... And okay, so we, we kind of like we haven't even touched on the major gimmick of things, which are which are toys that look one way and then transform into something else. Yeah, that's one. I think that's the biggest gimmick of all. Um, but, yeah, a puzzle play. It's more of a play pattern thing than than I would consider it to be a yeah. gimmick. Even when you're turning their engines, their heads, or their weapons into little robots, or you know, you crack open the shell of one and there's a little robot inside. Uh, I, I almost see that as more like satisfying a play pattern, like puzzle play, okay. than than to be uh, than to be considered a gimmick. But honestly, is there ever been something cooler than that? No, that's what I mean. I mean, yeah. it, that's its selling point. I mean, it's, it's one thing you transform yeah. it, and now it's another that's, thing. Gobots I mean, and transform transforming robots. That's that's it, man. I mean, that's yeah. Uh, unless you're going to talk about something like the Infaceables with that weird like yeah. rubber skin that dissolves <laughs> over time uh, where their facial features just barely change a little bit and yeah. that was it and that that's like a super poor execution <laughs> uh, yeah but, no, that, but I, I, I do think that I mean if, if we're I mean I, I'll call it a gimmick a gimmick is a gimmick and that's what it's thing it's, it's thing uh, something that is put forth to make you want to buy whatever it is so transforming, I consider, is still a gimmick, even though it's a it's what it's based around. Uh, but you know, it it does it right. It it makes you want to buy it. So uh, Transformers is one of the coolest gimmicks. Transforming things. Yeah. Uh, so Transformers and Gobots were really cool, and then there were other. Uh, and, you ones know, whatever that were... you had like GI Joe vehicles where things shifted around. Something yeah. came out like the the thing drops open, the two sides on the havoc, and the hover thing comes yeah. out. Uh, they had a little bit of that integrated into those toys, which made them cool. But then, like the ultimate mask, Ma mask, yeah, yep. mask is the yep. the perfect integration of Transformers and GI Joe. Yep, uh, which is where I think uh, their Hasbro's next big, big resurgence should be focused on. Uh, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe they need to do <clears throat> Mask and the Furious. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> Vin Diesel needs the money oh, these days, geez. I guess. But, I mean, with, with the infatuation that a lot of people have with transforming toys, with cars in general, and things like that these days, it's, to me, that's a no-brainer. It's like a perfect, you know, a property that they've got just laying there, waiting in the wings to come back and make a big impact. Yeah, got to be done right, but it's, it has all of the ingredients. It, it does. The, it has the personalities, the characters, the trans, the cool transforming technology. Uh that is probably the biggest untapped gold mine out right there now. right now for, it absolutely for a franchise, is. Uh, far, far and away. But there's there's got to be something, you know. Hasbro's sitting on it for a reason. Yeah, I mean, maybe they're trying to do some. Maybe there's, I don't know. Maybe they're trying to make them app, you know, app enabled. You can have your your phone be able to connect to it now and make it transform, or I don't know. It, our technology has gone well, such the, the a. One so, thing that would be would be true about that is it would it would need support of a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, because you're talking a lot of tooling yeah. to get that to go. 
even if they really got it down and worked it down super basic without a lot of spring me loaded mechanisms you know it's it's a lot of tooling yeah because <clears throat> you know the average like condor vehicle would be 15 to 20 bucks in, yep. in the store with a little driver and and the toy so they really had, would need to work that down and get some price points in maybe mission packs at 10 with a little transforming right. gear and a figure yeah. in there um but, but yeah, I, I mean, they they really need something to drive that because it, it's not like GI Joe where you could just reuse certain parts and recolor them differently to make exactly. different characters. The colors, the characters are all so distinct that, and the vehicles too. Yep. Well, and and Transformers are actually really hot right now for both kids and adults. Um, so and and cars, like I said, cars never really go out of fashion. So. No. Uh, I think it's just a perfect property, just waiting to come back. And I'll be super happy when it does, if if it does. I'm I'm hoping it does. Yeah, I'd, um, I'd be excited to see that. What do you want Thunderhawk to be? What kind of car? Huh, let me see. Oh God. Because I mean, you really could do it with a lot. Uh, it would. It, well, it would have to be sporty. It would have to be sports car. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, Oh, do you just right, go muscle look, car like Charger or something? Well, or, no. Or do you do one of these new Corvettes, which are almost like Lamborghini esque in in some of their body shapes? Uh, <clears throat> maybe I don't know. Maybe muscle car would be the way to go for this yeah, one. Uh, I think. Like the a Mustang. Oh, or, yeah. Or a, I, I love the, the uh, Chargers. They're, that's a really sweet looking car. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Maybe discussion for a different time, but uh, I was thinking about that the other day. Which car you can almost you can do? almost have Thunderhawk. It might not have to have the gull wing doors open like it did. Maybe it could have a transformation similar to Manta, you know, like slide out wings yeah. or something. But uh, there's a lot they could do with it, and it just would take movie support to happen. And trust me, we got enough retarded stuff out there. That... Oh man, can you imagine like <clears throat> the mask, a live action mask movie, starting off like back in the '80s, and like having like 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 it, it's like it was big and then they got decommissioned and they had to go yes, away and so then all of a sudden Venom makes this resurgence and they have to bring back Mask and it's all new vehicles and all new yes, things yeah throw back to the old yeah vehicles. kind of show Thunder Thunderhawk as it's old uh, what is it it's covered in shrouds yeah. and you know or like mothballed and maybe Matt Tracker's not even a central character other than like the oh, General he, Hawk which is he would be like the older guy he's like you know I have a little bit of experience in this. Let's try to build a, a younger, better team, and we bring in new people. And I, 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 dude, I would go. be, I would, yeah. be, I would be down with that. Yeah. I'd be or maybe that. Scott Tracker is the the new driver of Thunderhawk or something, and he's not a dipshit anymore. T <laughs> Bob, T Bob's in the corner. He's broken. He's broken. He's a vending machine or an ashtray now. <laughs> If it was a vending machine, he could still talk, so you wouldn't want Scott, that. Scott turned 15 and was like, Dad, we need to get rid of this thing. Uh, he's a toilet. <laughs> the family, it's the family cabin. Burk. Family cabin out there in the middle of the woods. It's not plumbed, so you go in these trees and step on his leg like a garbage can. He's like, up and you take Scott, a shit in it. Yeah. Scott, it's so good to see you again. Why are you taking your pants down? Oh, no. Oh, no. Scott, no. Oh. <laughs> I have a tic tac. <laughs> oh, that went south so bad. Oh. I'm sorry, Doug. This is the only thing I know how to joke. About that went poop. south. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I, I, I don't know. I would probably still watch it. <laughs> yeah, me too. It'd be funny. As long as it wasn't directed by Michael Bay, but what we just described it might is be, like though. right out of Michael Bay's playbook. That that's the only thing he could do. <laughs> oh man, that would be all right. Uh, I don't know. So yeah, gimmicks. There's a lot of them out there. We we touched on a lot of them. I think we're running uh, pretty long. We're at uh, about an hour fifteen. So I think it's a good time to yeah to yeah. stop if, it. If we missed anything. Or if you want to commiserate with me about <laughs> Bob the Goon and his horrible gimmick from 1990, Batman. Batman, the crappiest action figure line, <laughs> uh, comment below. My mom won't mind. Nah, let us know what you think are some cool gimmicks. Do you agree with us? Do you not agree with us? Did we miss any? Let us know. I'd be pretty excited to hear it, uh, if anybody's even listening. <laughs> so. Yeah, so, till next time, everybody, uh, if this gets out on time, have a happy and safe Christmas holiday. Yep.